Gunshot survivors of Reddit. What does it feel like to get shot? Right thigh, 9mm, grazing shot across the front of the leg about 4 inches above the knee. It plowed a channel of skin and some flesh off the front. It felt searing hot, like someone had laid a hot piece of metal on my leg for a second. Then the pain went away for a while until the adrenaline wore off. It honestly hurt worse 6 hours later than when it happened. Story 2. I was shot in the leg. It felt like a hard flick of a finger and then numbness. I didn't think I was shot until I saw the hole in my pants. Even then I thought maybe a rock hit me or something. No pain or blood until I started walking. Then came a gush of blood, and my entire body went limp. People saw what happened, so I had help right away. After that, it hurt, but somewhere around a 6 or a 7 on a scale of 10. Another time, I was hit by a fragment from a ricochet on my forehead. Same feeling of being flicked with a finger. The area around the wound went white, and there was no blood. The pain for that one was around a 5. Neither time was bad, but I don't want to try my luck again. Edit. In the leg, I was hit by a 32 cal, and it was a clean entry and exit. Someone speculated that the wound was cauterized, and that's true to some extent, and would explain the lack of burning sensation that many others described. My forehead was hit just above my eyebrow, so it luckily missed my eye. Also, it was a small fragment of a 22 cal, about the size of a pea. It wasn't a deep wound, and the fragment probably stopped any bleeding. I have no permanent injury or damage from either gunshot, other than a couple of scars. My profession in the private sector often places me in dangerous situations and dangerous places. Neither was related to my work, however. I do illegally conceal carry all the time because you just never know. I've never used a gun in self-defense, though. Someone already mentioned where I live, so that may answer the questions as to why I was shot. No one was charged in either incident. Both individuals were stupid, reckless, and irresponsible people. What's a level 10 pain for me? For me, that would be either a migraine or a kidney stone. Migraines can be incredibly painful and debilitating. It's the pain, loss of vision, stomach, and even coming off of one. Luckily, I don't get them very often. I gave birth to a kidney stone the size of a large grain of salt. From the pain, I was expecting something more the size of a grapefruit. Both definitely tens. Others who answered this question were in far worse shape than I was. Others less than me. It was painful for everyone, but I don't think it's what most people expect due to Hollywood portrayals. I'd recommend avoiding getting shot at all costs. I'm astonished no one was charged in either incident. Kind of unlucky for OP, I think. And they didn't go into details about how it happened either, just that they're around dangerous situations. But then mentioning that these two instances of getting shot weren't related to what they do? So many questions, still OP. Story 3. I got shot in the ankle when I was 10. Honestly, I thought a rock hit me. Just a slight stinging feeling. Didn't really hurt. I even kept running with my bike. Later at the hospital was a different story. The doctor tried to remove the bullet without putting me under. He said the pain medicine would make me forget everything. He gave up after a minute of hell, and whatever he gave me did not work as described. But it did oddly make everyone look purple from what I remember, so maybe it half worked. Story 4. I was hit twice during separate tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. The first time, the round caught the armor plate and felt like I'd been hit with a baseball bat. It knocked the wind out of me, and when we got back to base I had a huge bruise on my chest. It hurt to breathe for a few days and getting dressed was a mother effer, but I got light duty during that time. The second time, a round clipped the side of my neck. Now that one really hurt and there was a lot of blood. Think of your worst razor nick times 10, but the pain was cut by the adrenaline. Story 5. 13 years ago at age 14 I was shot by a home intruder 5 times with a 38 revolver. 3 rounds hit my abdomen, 1 hit my left forearm, and the final hit my left thigh. I was woken up by commotion in the living room. I thought it was my sibling getting home late from a friend's house, so I went to get water in the kitchen. That's when the guy saw me, panicked, and proceeded to dump the entire cylinder of this revolver into me from 10 feet away. At first, it felt like someone jabbing me with a hot poker, the most painful one actually being my arm right away. The ones to my leg and stomach started to hurt far more after maybe a minute or two. Not sure, since the event felt like it took an hour from start to finish. My sense of time when it comes to remembering the shooting is very distorted to this day by what happened. The guy got away before anyone got to me. My parents were out of town, and like I said, my brother was out at a friend's house. Luckily, a neighbor called a 911 within minutes of it happening, and I was taken to the ER. It was during the ambulance ride that the pain really hit me. A sharp, hot pain took over me, every bump feeling like each spot was getting punched over and over again. Before they started operating to remove the three rounds still in my abdomen, it felt like my guts were being torn out of me by hand. From there, I don't remember the next five days of my life. I fell into a short coma due to the pain. I was hooked up to more tubes than I could count when I woke up, giving me fluids, pain meds, antibiotics, sucking out stomach bile and other fluids to keep my digestive tract all clear to heal. All there was pain-wise was a very dull pain everywhere. It hurt the most to breathe, each breath feeling like an intense pressure on my gut. From here, my memory is still hazy due to the amount of pain meds I was on to keep me calm. 
During the healing process, we found out I had developed Crohn's disease, which the doctors figure was lying dormant my entire life, only flaring up due to the extreme stress my body went through in a short period. This caused my abdomen area to heal improperly, causing me to go through a long, drawn-out ordeal with the disease before finally having to end up with a permanent colostomy setup. Thirteen years later, it's my reminder of what happened that night, why I now sleep with a handgun near me, wake up with the night terrors of the event, and sometimes get scared if there's a noise in the middle of the night. The person who shot me was never caught as far as I know, and in the end, nothing was stolen from my parents' house. To this day, I'm glad no one was home. I'm not sure I could live with a reality where one of my family members was shot instead of me that night, or them having to find me after it happened. Thanks for reading, and stay safe, my friends. Statistically, I think home invasions do not result in shootings a lot of the time, so OP got super unlucky here, and then super lucky to be shot five times and live. I guess each one just avoided the important stuff. Which, hey, good for you, OP. Definitely sounds like an absolutely terrifying event I wouldn't wish on anyone, though. And OP, I hope you never have to go through anything like that ever again. Or anyone listening, I hope you don't have to go through this for the first time either. Story 6. I was shot with a 22 in the back. The initial shot hit my vertebrae, and paralyzed me from the waist down. I literally just stiff-legged and fell backwards. I then felt a hot wave run down my back and to my butt. Then the searing pain set in. It was excruciating, and I literally screamed and swore the whole time. When someone asks the level of pain I was in, I tell them, think of the worst pain they've ever experienced, and multiply it by a hundred times. The pain and realization that I couldn't move my legs was just heartbreaking, and I just wanted out. Three years later, and lots of intense physical therapy later, I've gained a lot of movement and function back. I can walk with the aid of AFOs and crutches, but still need a wheelchair at home and for long distances. Edit. To those asking why or how I was shot, I was on private property shooting with friends. We stopped shooting and I went downrange to change something. My friend decided that was the time to try and unload his 22 revolver, and as he pointed it downrange, he somehow pulled the trigger and shot me. I don't know what possessed him to do that, as even if the gun was loaded, nothing would happen if you don't touch it, but he did. In the middle of nowhere, it took about half an hour for an ambulance to come, then a life flight to the nearest hospital. I'm lucky the bullet hit the vertebrae, as it stopped it from going into organs and having me bleed out. Oddly enough, there wasn't much blood, and wound management was very minimal, and yes, he is still my friend. I forgave him, and he definitely has suffered mentally for it. He doesn't deserve more pain either. Story 7. Got shot point-blank in the chest with a 22 rifle. Two people were arguing. I was 16 years old, relaxing on a couch. They were 18, and to this day I thought I knew them, but I think they were up to some shady stuff when I was in the shower. Shady stuff meaning hard drugs. 41 now, and I've thought about it many times. Anyway, the two were screaming at each other about who's tougher. One was going to the Navy, the other Marines. One said, If you're so tough, shoot me. At that, he went into the room and grabbed the only gun we had along on the trip, weekend mountain slash camp trip to the cabin. We were shooting cans and left one round in the chamber. Only bullet we kept to line up all the cans on the log before we left and do one shot through them all. Dumb kids. Pulled the trigger. I lost my breath. My ears started ringing, and I was trying to get up, but it felt like a wet blanket was on my chest down to my legs. I looked down, and a half inch from my heart was a tiny hole with one single drop of blood trail coming from it. Dude ran to a payphone before cell phones were common and dialed 911. Ambulance was there in six minutes, which still amazes me considering where we were. And result, bullet was lodged in my spine. Removed it two days later. Paralyzed. Wheelchair bound, chest down. Okay, so when it comes to proving how tough you are, shooting an unarmed bystander? I don't think that does it, personally. I don't know where these guys' heads were at, but clearly not the right place. Could it have something to do with the substances they ingested? Oh, perhaps. Anyway, OP, that is, uh, truly unfortunate. I'm glad you survived, at the very least. Story 8. Back of my left leg with a low-caliber round. I was walking home from school and someone drove by and shot me. I remember hearing a high-pitched whistle and then a snap sensation in my leg. At first, I didn't have a clue what happened. It felt like someone took a willow switch and snapped it in the back of my leg. Didn't really hurt, just surprised. I looked over my shoulder and didn't see anyone. I went to continue walking and then went to step on the leg. I felt something move out of my leg and then it went numb, which made me fall down since I was expecting my leg to support me. The feeling of something moving was the slug sliding out of my leg as my jeans pulled tight on it. The bullet didn't actually pierce my jeans, just took them into my leg with it. This is why I think it had to be low caliber. I feel like I should have submitted the story to Levi Jeans to tell them their jeans were bulletproof. Story 9. Long story short, it freaking hurts. For years, decades in my case. 
I was shot through the chest just below my heart. It exited through my back, cracking vertebrae. When the shots were fired, no one knew what had happened, including me. It sounded like someone lit firecrackers in the bar and I thought some piece of that hit me in the chest. Felt like someone tapped me really hard in the middle of the chest. I was sitting at the bar and apparently said to the woman next to me, Did I just get shot? Before falling off the stool, I didn't feel much pain for a while as I was essentially dying, bleeding out on the floor. All those death and trauma chemicals and high gear. I was approaching death for the first time during this, and I felt like I was given a choice to live or die. When I chose to live, that's when the worst pain I couldn't even imagine started. I've always had a pretty high threshold for pain, but I was audibly screaming, which apparently is a good sign. In the ambulance, apparently I kept thanking them and telling them how much I appreciated them. They needed to inject a valve into my chest to release the pressure. Sorry, I'm not a medical expert. They asked if I was ready. I remember I said, please frickin' do it. And when they did, so much pain was released. The next days were pain through my entire body, ICU, drugs, wake up to pain through my entire body, surgery, constantly thanking the amazing hospital staff, pain, pain, and lastly, pain. I've suffered from chronic pain my entire life, and I'm one of the lucky ones. I didn't die, I wasn't paralyzed, and I didn't get addicted to painkillers, but I suffer from pain to this day, both physical and emotional, which is also physical. To this day, approaching two decades after the fact, I sometimes will just sneeze, and it locks up my ribs that were broken, and it was the same type of pain I had in my months of physical recovery. Stuff like that really triggers my PTSD, and I'm useless both practically and in my head. I can barely walk when it happens. Everyone's experience with being shot is different, so I'm not speaking for any other survivors. Story 10. I accidentally discharged my 9 and I was hit in the head. While it was going on, I honestly didn't feel any pain, but everything slowed way down. Healing and recuperating was the hardest. My mouth and jaw were wired shut for several months. Had to have complete facial reconstruction surgery. Had to take a piece of bone from my skull and graft it to my nose just so I could have a nose. I also had to have a feeding tube for almost a whole year. I've fully recovered and I'm very lucky. I remember mostly everything. Some things from the incident I don't remember, but for the most part, I have my memories intact. Story 11. My brother shot me with a 22 when I was about 14. Hit me in the shoulder from about 100 feet away. Only thing that saved me from it being a serious injury was he used my rifle, and I hadn't cleaned it since the last time I went shooting, so it didn't have that much energy by the time it left the barrel. It went in about half an inch. I couldn't get it out and had to go to the local clinic to get it removed. I was more in shock that my jerk brother shot me than by any of the pain. Honestly, it really didn't hurt that much. Later, he said I was lucky as he was aiming for my head. Let that be a lesson, kids. If your brother is a jerk, don't clean your guns. Okay, so instead of jerk, OP used the word, you know, a-hole. The one I can't say without getting demonetized, maybe. I don't know how YouTube works, really. I'm just playing it safe. Anyway, even that seems, uh, a bit gentle on him. Like, bro shot you, was aiming for your head. I don't know if I'd just call them a jerk. I feel like there are harsher words you can and should use in this circumstance. Story 12. Been shot three times. It depends on the bullet and where it hits from my experience. 45 hollow point felt like someone took a full flat-ended rod and stabbed me hard enough it punched through me and burned like an absolute mother effer. So in short, big hard solid hit. Mild sharp stabby pain like a cut or stab, and the feeling of hot metal burning me. 223 gave solid shove. Burning line through where it passed, not much actual pain till later. Another 223 round, however, hit my shoulder blade. Similar sensation, except where it hit my shoulder blade, it felt like someone had shattered it using a hammer. People ask why I've been shot three times. The hollow point and the 223 that hit my shoulder were both doing aid work. One in Haiti after the 2010 earthquake, and one in Mexico doing aid work with migrants. The third was from an idiot's negligence during a shooting contest. Story 13. Not me, but a patient I had when I was a nurse. Dude took three shots, two to the chest and one to the abdomen. He said it happened at a bonfire when some random dude opened fire because he was mad his girlfriend went to the bonfire or something like that. I asked him how it felt, and he said at first it felt like he was punched by very tiny fists that were on fire. Pain meds made him hilarious with his descriptions. He didn't even realize he was shot until someone told him he was bleeding everywhere. Two of the bullets were through and through, and he had to have exploratory surgery to remove the third, which miraculously missed every major organ. He didn't really feel any pain until he woke up from surgery. I miss that guy. He was by far my favorite patient. Story 14. I got shot through the back one time at a party just standing there. It went through my back and out through right below my solar plexus. Amazingly enough, it didn't really hit anything. The doctors even came in and were amazed by the x-rays. When I first noticed it, it was because it was a spark in front of my face. 
where the bullet that went through me hit the wall. Then I remember feeling like I was being squeezed. And then I remember taking a huge breath and hearing a weird noise that was air rushing into the wound. Disbelief staggered me for probably 90 seconds or maybe a little more. I'm with the other guys. On a scale from 1 to 10, I give it a 6. And if you want to know what's worse, yeah, it's kidney stones. Screw kidney stones. You want to torture somebody? Give them kidney stones. Story 15. Right eye. 40 caliber hollow point. Point blank range. I felt nothing but instant confusion. My ears were ringing and I could not form a cohesive thought. After I saw the gun barrel smoking, I finally started to realize I had just been shot. I wasn't sure where I'd been hit because you don't realize that you're currently blind in one eye because you see the look of horror on the person who just shot you's face perfectly fine with your one remaining eye. I looked down to see if there was a hole in my chest only to realize I'd been shot in the eye when I began to feel around my face with my hands, only to have my fingers slip into the warm jello cup that is now my right eye socket. Paramedics on the way, I fall to the floor and start throwing up a ton of blood. Oh, my friends are nowhere to be found, as they have plenty of paraphernalia to dispose of before the police arrive. So I have the pleasure of wallowing in my own blood and crying out for someone to comfort me as I'm sure I'm about to take my final breaths. After what feels like an hour, firefighters arrive. I inform them I have hemophilia factor 9 and promptly pass the F out. Story 16. So, a little more than a decade ago, I was shot in the calf, point blank, from slug from a shotgun. I was at a friend's house with another friend of his, who was apparently toying with a gun he didn't think was loaded. It was a loud gun in a small basement, and I was sitting down in a chair already so I didn't get knocked down, but immediately it felt like those moments in video games where a flashbang goes off. Just instant sensory disorientation. The following all happened in just moments. But I was in such a heightened state of perception from the adrenaline that it all felt like slow motion over the course of 30 whole seconds. I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what, and my brain wasn't giving me any specific information. So I looked over to where the noise came from and I see the guy with a horrified look on his face holding a smoking shotgun. I could even perceive and register the smoke in this instant. Brains are wild. This seemed bad. So I looked down at myself to see if I was shot, but hey, I looked fine. Then I leaned forward and looked at my leg. There was just a big, bloody wound where my calf used to be. Then everything sort of clicked at once what had happened. And like Wiley e. Coyote, as soon as I realized, that's when I first felt the actual pain that my brain was hiding from me. And that's when the screaming and swearing began. Miraculously, there was no bone damage and no major artery damage. My surgeon said it was a hair's breadth away from my femoral artery, and I was eventually able to get back on my feet, literally. Getting shot wasn't the worst pain of that ordeal, though. That was nothing compared to getting the gauze slash dressing changed during the month before it healed enough to get a skin graft. Three times a week I would have to anticipate the worst part, and then feel what it's like to have gauze being pulled off of my exposed sciatic nerve. Felt like a guitar string being plucked that was connected directly to my brain. Zero out of ten, do not recommend. Now look, I'm no expert on guns or gun safety, but I believe you should always treat a gun as if it's loaded, right? Like that's the general practice? Screwing around with guns seems like a good way to have a horrible accident happen. Anyway, OP, I'm glad that you somehow made it out of this alright. A shotgun to the calf usually doesn't end so well. I don't know that from experience, admittedly, but I can guess. Story 17. Shot in the back with a high-power rifle. Either a 30-30 or a 270. Bullet went in my back and out of my chest. It felt like getting hit full force in the chest with a baseball bat. Then I felt all the air sucked out of me. Then came the burn. I felt weak and could almost feel myself slipping out of my body. I died several times a week for almost a month when they finally got the infection under control. They had me in a medically induced coma for a while and that sucked. My surgery scar runs from my chest plate to my pubic area and is over an inch wide. They had staples to close me up but because of the infection, ended up having to leave me open and heal naturally. I had to pack saline soaked gauze down inside my body until it closed. Horrible experience would not recommend. Story 18. I was shot in the chest. The impact threw me to the ground. The bullet traveled sideways through my chest, piercing multiple organs along the way, before stopping on the other side of my chest where it wedged between two ribs. Missed my heart by millimeters. Every time I took a breath, my lungs would press against all my damaged organs and send me through the roof. One of my lungs ended up collapsing. The initial trauma and subsequent recovery were one of the most painful moments of my life. My takeaway? I can't express how grateful I am to the medical community at every level. The dedication and care of the doctors and nurses at every level saved my life, and they do this with anyone and everyone. Every day. Amazing. Story 19. I have seen, conservatively, more than 1,000 gunshot wounds. Probably closer to 3,000. Either way, 
quite a bit. The amount of people who come in refusing pain medication and at relative ease would baffle you. That said, the initial sympathetic nervous system eventually turns down and stops a blunting pain response, and then they are more receptive to treating the pain. Obviously, injury location and whether there's a fracture also comes into play. Additionally, chronic opioid patients or anyone with upregulated pain receptors I can usually hear coming down the hallways. Story 20. It was a long-distance shot. No idea what, exactly, but a lead cartridge and something like a hunting shotgun. I was at the athletics track running and suddenly felt a hammer blow to the right thigh. Bullet did a ricochet off me. So it just left a bit of a hole, nothing too serious, in the thigh and through the shorts. In all honesty, it was more baffling than scary because I never saw the shooter. He then shot four other people in the following month. All in the legs, too. By luck, as he certainly wasn't skilled, which meant the police could triangulate the apartment, big blocks of apartments all around the track, and arrest him. Think he got 19 months in jail, 9 suspended. Not worth the dwelling on the what-ifs because it could have been lethal for any of the five of us had he hit other bits of us, but hey. As to his backstory, he was a bit of a bummer who went through his flatmate's gun collection while he was at work and decided to have fun, I guess. This was in Paris, by the way. Sacre bleu. Well, that is a horrifying use of a gun. Just taking pot shots at people for no reason, just fun. Ugh. And hey, wasn't even North America. Would you look at that? That must have been quite the story in France. 18 months seems a bit light, in my opinion. Not sure how that happened, but different country, different laws. Anyway, I'm glad that you and the other four victims are all right. Good thing that guy had no training whatsoever. Story 21. 26 years ago, I was shot five times from six feet away by a 44 Magnum with hollow point bullets. Same gun in Dirty Harry, the do you feel lucky, punk? Three bullets struck me in the abdomen and one hit me between the bicep and triceps, and one grazed my elbow. The bullets all entered from the front, leaving a small hole about a quarter inch. Most just exploded inside, taking out my spleen slash left kidney slash spinal cord. One bullet in the arm hit on an angle. I have roughly a silver dollar-sized scar on the entry and exit wounds. One of the bullets in the abdomen exited from my back. The one that severed my spinal cord and blew out vertebrae and left an open wound about an inch and a half in diameter. I didn't feel any pain and was awake for roughly 30 minutes until I passed out from blood loss into a coma, which I would awake from a month and a half later. If you survive something like this, it's not the initial pain you should be worried about. It's the years of PTSD you have to deal with throughout your life. Story 22. Ricochet to left cheekbone from an M16. From 500 meters. For reference, max effective range on a point target for an M16A2 is 550 meters. Still plenty of death left in the round, I just got lucky. In the target pits in MCRD Paris Island. Suddenly my face feels like I got hit with a large rock. Then I get the funny bone feeling in my whole left of the head. Then I heard the crack. All in a fraction of a second. I reach up and pull the entire jacket of the round out of my left cheek. My vision in that eye has been randomly spotty since. And I could still show you the bone fragment and where it came from in my cheek. It's a great party trick. Hey, come feel the piece of bone in my face that's from when an M16 bullet made friends with my cheekbone. I don't scar easily. And you can only really see it when I get deeply tan or under a black light. It's not noticeable if I grow my beard. But you can definitely feel the pretty big divot in my face from it. And the tissue feels different. I also smile differently on that side. But yeah, to answer the question, large rock to the face and funny bone. Story 23. It didn't feel like much at all. I was mugged. I froze with a gun to my head. He punched me in the nose, pistol whipped me, and then went for my pockets. I was wearing two small skinny jeans. I struggled to get my wallet out on a daily basis, and he couldn't get it either. He was in a hurry. The idiot had cocked and fired the gun when he pulled it out, near a busy town square right after bars had let out. So he shot me in the leg. I don't know if it was intentional. I still wonder if he accidentally pulled the trigger as he swung the gun downwards to stick it back in his waistband. But I was standing with my back to the wall. He would have had to step forward and beside me for it to be an accident. Anyway, my ears were still ringing from the first gunshot, and it sounded alien. Maybe I was already in shock. I felt my jeans rustle against my leg. I felt the warm blood, but it was a strange feeling. The bullet severed major nerves in my leg, so my calf went numb. I knew after a moment that I'd been shot, but I still didn't feel it. I started walking across the road to the bar he had just left. I think I made it about ten feet before the first Good Samaritan showed up. He helped me lay down, or maybe I collapsed. At that point, things get fuzzy. I remember the police arriving and applying a tourniquet. The next thing I remember was being in the ambulance on the way to the hospital, begging the paramedic to let me call my mom. It was 3 a.m. the morning after Mother's Day, and I hadn't called her the day before. I told her not to panic, I was okay, but I'm on the way to the hospital. I'd been shot. I still couldn't feel it. I don't know when the pain really started, but every day for months after that was agony. I told my family I'd rather they cut my leg off. A couple times a week for the first month or two, I would end up with the worst pulsing cramps in my leg. 
It felt like the hole in my leg was a black hole, pulling everything towards it into the void. This would go on for a minute or two, then it would stop, as suddenly as it appeared. Then the blood would flow again. The first time was the day after I left the hospital. They couldn't do much while I was there. They just washed the wound, wrapped it tightly, and sent me home with some prescriptions and medical supplies. They didn't warn me about the cramps, but I don't think they knew. So there I was, bleeding all over the foyer like I'd just been shot again. We knew what to do. We applied pressure as best as we could, but it wouldn't stop. Mom called an ambulance, and the bleeding finally stopped after a few minutes before they arrived. I'd lost a pint of blood in five minutes. The foyer looked like a murder scene. I went back to the hospital just to get checked out. The ambulance was already there, so better safe than sorry. The nurse got me cleaned up, gave me an injection, probably morphine. Then we waited for what felt like an eternity. My leg was on fire again. Finally, the doctor arrived. A sweet little Asian lady with a clipboard in hand. She was looking over the info, and the first thing she said when she walked in was, You got shot yesterday and all they gave you was Tylenol 3? I'm gonna write you a prescription for hydrocodone. That was seven years ago. I still don't remember the date. It was either May 11th or May 14th. Every time I want to know, I have to look up what day Mother's Day landed on in 2015. So, I just did. I was shot around 2.30am, May 11th, 2015. Seven year anniversary is about an hour away. I've tried to make Mother's Day a bit more memorable every year since then, but I didn't do much this year. I worked the omelette station for a 500 person brunch, 10 hours on my feet. It still hurts every day. Sorry for the long story. I've posted it to Reddit a few times before, but this was the first time I was able to recall it without a major anxiety attack. Things are getting better. Thanks for asking. Well, OP, I bet you've never forgotten about Mother's Day, so that's a plus. Getting shot and, well, probably traumatized. Less good, admittedly. And just the way you got shot, too. Just a stupid mugger, probably some kid, essentially. Too fast and loose with a gun for no reason, for no gain, just making bad decisions. It's frustrating to hear about, for sure. Anyway, OP, I'm glad you're doing at least okay now. It is wild imagining them getting you out of the hospital and just prescribing you Tylenol T3, or just giving you T3s. Like, I think if someone gets shot, they need something a little more than that. Anyway, that is the last story for today. How it feels to get shot is something I've also been morbidly curious about, so this was a really interesting thread for me. And I assume if you're watching this video, you thought it was interesting too. That being said, it's not on the bucket list, to be honest. I'm still not looking to get shot. I think this thread is good enough for me. Anyway, for now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.